In this video, I'm going to actually work out a problem where we find the concavity and the points of inflection of a curve. This video is part two of two, so you, you might want to go back and make sure you watch part one. In that one, I talk about the definition of continuity. We talk about points of inflection and what causes a point of inflection and that sort of thing. So definitely, if you don't have any background um, on concavity and points of inflection, before you see an example worked out, you might definitely want to go back and watch part one. All right, so the directions here are going to say determine the open intervals on which the graph is concave up or down and determine the points of inflection. All right, so the first thing we're going to need to do, since our points of inflection come from our second derivative, we're setting that second derivative equals zero. We need to calculate the first derivative. We need to calculate the second derivative. So right off the bat, we're going to go first derivative f prime is going to be 4x to the third and then minus a 12x squared. All right, then I need the second derivative, so I'm going to do f double prime of x is equal to a 12x squared minus a 24x. All right, and I've got that second derivative. All right, now at this point then, if I set that second derivative equal to zero, I'm going to have possible points of inflection. And I like to really emphasize possible points of inflection because just because I set this second derivative equal to zero and I find some points on the curve, all right, I mean, there could be something else funky going on. So you definitely have to, at that point, you've got possible points of inflection. So let's do that right here and actually put it out. Possible points of inflection. And I just kind of emphasize that to make sure that my students don't just automatically do it set equal to zero and then, oh, yep, that's definitely it. Okay, so um, let's take that second derivative set equal to zero. So 12x squared minus 24x equals zero. All right, let's factor out a 12x. All right, out of here, that's going to leave me with just an x. And 24x, taking that 12x out would just leave me with a 2. So then from here, I'm going to get x equals 0. And from here, I'm going to get x equals a 2. All right, now, since points of inflection are points on the curve, then I ha usually have my students write them as an ordered pair. Okay, so we're going to label these possible points of inflection. All right, and zero. Now, since they are points of inflection are on that original curve, you're going to take zero, plug it back in here to this original curve, and clearly that's going to give us a zero. And then we're going to take that x equals 2, and we're going to plug that back into the equation, and you might need a calculator to do that. Um, it turns out to be a negative 16. All right, so at this point, these technically really are just my possible points of inflection. All right, and then I'm going to determine my concavity using a number line, and then I'm going to be able, probably from there, to determine specifically, well, are they for sure points of inflection or not? Okay, so at this point, I'm going to draw eh, a relatively nice long number line here. I'm going to put these two possible points of inflection on my number line. I'm going to put 0 there, and I'm going to put there 2 there. I'm going to go ahead and label these intervals <clears throat> on this number line. So negative infinity all the way up to 0. The interval here from 0 to 2, and then the interval from 2 to infinity. All right, now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking a look at the second derivative first, and I'm going to be determining, well, is it positive or is it negative? And then that's going to tell me then what f of x is doing. So that'll give me my concavity. All right, so if I want to know what my second derivative is doing here, I'm going to pick second derivative. I'm going to pick a number in this interval. And keep in mind, I don't need to know the specific value. I just need to know mm, about. Okay, so obviously these are going to be negative numbers. So if I take, a say, a negative 1. I take negative 1 squared. It's going to give me a positive 12 right there. All right, and then times a negative 1 here with that minus right there it's going to give me some type of positive number. So my second derivative is going to be greater than zero. All right, now in this interval, I don't know, let's pick one because one's easy to work with. If I plug one in here, I get a 12. I plug one in here, I get 24. So clearly that would be a negative value or less than zero. My second derivative will be less than zero in this interval. All right, doing it again over here, some positive number. All right, I don't know, three, four, five, whatever you want to do. This will be positive and pretty darn big minus another number that's positive and probably going to be smaller than that. So I'm going to have, again, 
a positive second derivative. All right, now that tells me then my original function. When my second derivative is positive or greater than zero, my original function is concave up. When my second derivative is less than zero, my original function is concave down. And then again, greater than zero is going to be a concave up. All right, now, so now I can look at this concavity, all right, and the question is, at zero and at two, at my two possible points of inflection, well, did my concavity change, concave up to concave down? So, yep, I've got a point of inflection at zero, zero, and it changed here from concave down to concave up, so I have a point of inflection here. Um, you might also want to definitely make sure and check that at those two points, this function is actually defined. It's a polynomial curve, so it's smooth and continuous everywhere. So yes, it is clearly um, defined right there. So now let's kind of summarize everything that we've done here. So what have we done? Um, we can identify our open intervals for our concavity. So concave up on the intervals from negative infinity to zero and from to infinity. I can do concave down on the interval from 0 to 2. And then we've got, let's just go POI points of inflection. All right, are going to be at, we said 0, 0 because the concavity changes, and at 2, negative 16. Okay, so concave up, interval notation with open intervals, concave down, and points of inflection. So everything that the directions asked us to find. All right, now I might note, especially if you're in an AP calculus class because you're in high school, all right, doing this number line in and of itself is not justification for your work. So you can't just leave it here and then expect them to see concave up, concave down, concave up there, and then give you credit for it. If you are asked to identify concave up and concave down, you may use an over line, and you may use that to help you determine those intervals, but you actually do have to then turn around and write it down so that they can see it. So just a little tip there for um, anybody that might be taking that AP Calc exam in their senior year. Um, so um, definitely part two of two on this concavity points inflections. Don't forget to go watch that first video. Hopefully you actually watch that before you watch this. And then one just nice little straightforward example of just being able to locate those two things. Definitely thanks for watching and be sure and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.